A good old Lexus CT hatchback could be making a return. We also have a new ISF Sport Performance news for Japan. Now, I just got back from the Civic Type R reveal. So I got this cool little mug. Um, but what's even cooler is the art my daughters made for me while I was gone. So Reggie made this one my four-year-old. I'm playing soccer. But not only that, I have a crowd of fairies cheering me on. Next one from my six-year-old Eve. Interpret this one. Not sure which way it needs to go. Maybe it's... I don't know, the sun coming up. I see stars. So it could be the sun and, and the multiple colors in the sky. Uh, this is a very similar theme, except we have a fox welcoming in the morning sky. Pretty neat there. And this is a treasure map where north is south and south is north. And that's just fantastic. So let's get into today's news. <laughs> Over at Best Car Web, Lexus CT successor model incoming transformed into a crossover SUV. Okay, I haven't read this yet, so this is all new to me, and it's debuting in 2024-2025. Now we're going to do a quick Zach Morris timeout in order to figure out what's going on. So this vehicle back here that was teased essentially in December when they unveiled all these new cars, all these electric cars. So we have this vehicle on the left, which to me, this is the no-brainer uh ct replacement now it's not that much smaller than we have on the ux and it's kind of placed behind the ux so in terms of size we'll see but it's probably a hair smaller um they can't do much worse though than the ux in terms of like interior cargo space this looks actually more practical than the cramped uh cramped ux now looking at the image though it does look fairly similar to the concept we looked at, but a little bit more frumpy, a little, I don't think it's as accurate. Obviously the, the render Lexus showed in the shadows is far more indicative of what we're going to see, at least in terms of the silhouette. So I think the silhouette, it looks a little bit too fat, a little too pudgy compared to what it will be. The spindle grill, who knows, but they're just taking a guess at it. I want to look at the back end though, because we really don't have proportions of the back end. I think this could be fairly accurate with the light bar going across. We know that's a signature now with Lexus vehicles ever since, gosh, was it the UX? The UX introduced kind of like the light bar that goes across. So this looks a lot better from the back. And I like how we have this sort of design that's taken from the RZ around the front fender and the front wheel. I think it looks much better from the back than it does at least from the render on the front. Production for the CT is still going on in Japan. I think that's the only market where it's still sold. It says October is the last month for it. They have to remind us that the CT has been around for more than 11 years since its debut in January of 2011. It was canceled here in 2017. Uh, we had, I think, one refresh. Europe got another refresh in 2017, I believe. Uh, and I can't believe it's still sold in Japan. They're saying the CT successor will have an abundance of power units, three types of BEV, what, hybrid, and gas, okay, so three types. So they're saying there are three types, BEVs one, instead of three different BEVs, there's one BEV, there's one hybrid, and there's one um, non-electrified model. So which ones would be we be getting here at Sayside? Who knows? We don't even know if we would be getting the CT here. Remember, it was discontinued in our market first before anywhere else. Conversely, I think this vehicle would actually do well for Lexus, especially with a recession incoming. Well, in theory, right? Some people say they were already in it with ridiculous inflation. A new cheap Lexus could fit the bill for our market. And if it has about the same interior practical space as the CT, sorry, the UX, then I think it should do well and it should have better space than the CT. The CT was awfully cramped as well, of course. The center of the sales is likely to be hybrids at first, but then they'll prepare the system for battery electric vehicles when the time comes. I mean, that makes sense. That's gonna happen with the Crown lineup as well. Heck, even the Lexus RX, I'm expecting that sort of transformation to happen eventually. So some sources are saying that the CT will be integrated with the UX for a small SUV. So meaning maybe the UX goes by the wayside. I don't see that happening. They're saying the latest information is I'll be reborn as a compact crossover different than the UX. I think more options and more models make sense, especially for a luxury vehicle maker. In Japan, the Note Aura, it's, it's a Nissan vehicle. We used to have the Note here actually, um, but canceled it. But that vehicle is doing really well in Japan. 
So they're saying this vehicle needs to come out to start raking in those sales, likely in the winter of 2024 or the spring of 2025. So about two, two and a half years out, um, that will go by quick. In the meantime, the Lexus UX will have to bear the brunt of it. Yes, there's a fully electric version of the UX, but only available in select markets. It's also pretty expensive, limited charging capabilities, limited range. I think it only has like 200 mile range or so. It's only got about 200 horse. So what would I want to see out of this sort of crossover in terms of power trains? I think we need to go to the spreadsheet for that. Which powertrains will go into this tiny little compact wagon little thing, the CT? It's really tough to say. They could go super conservative and put the Yaris and Yaris cross powertrains, the three cylinder and the three cylinder hybrids in there, uh, maxing out at 114 horsepower. Now, I, I just don't see that happening with a Lexus. I think they would at least put the 1.8 liter in there uh, that's newly updated with not only the Corolla, but the Noah and the Voxy in Japan. And that has 138 horsepower. You can get it, of course, in e all wheel drive as well as the tiny three cylinder hybrid setup. If it comes here stateside, I would at least like to see this setup, if not the two liter hybrid that we see in the UX. We know this powertrain is capable of up to 197 horsepower. That's seen in the Corolla across in Europe. Um, this setup has 194 horsepower in the Corolla Cross here stateside. Well, when we get that vehicle later this year. So Toyota and Lexus have no shortage of hybrids um, and just small vehicle powertrains to slot into the new CT. The more power, the better, in my opinion, for this vehicle. But since the UX already has this setup, I would think they would go smaller with the 1.8 or the 1.5 liter hybrids. Now they said there's also going to be a naturally aspirated uh, non-hybrid version. So that's either going to be this inline three cylinder or the inline four cylinder two liter with 169 horsepower. It's hard to say, but anyways, we're still two and a half years out. So the speculation is really high at this point. We know this vehicle or or some, some sort of CT successor, whether it's a CT or not, is coming based off this image, we know it's coming. We just don't know when exactly. So I'm very excited for it, but we have one last nugget of news. Uh, this actually came from, I think it was Best Car or one of the Japanese magazines uh, a month or two ago saying that, hey, uh, Lexus is finally bringing the IS500 S4 performance to Japan. And we didn't know if it was gonna be called F Sport performance model, if it was gonna be a full-blown F, uh, designation for the Japanese market. But here we go. It says IS 500 announced in Japan. It's the same thing that we get here stateside um, as the IS 500 F Sport Performance. And there it is, newly set F Sport Performance model. So the rumors or just the speculation of whether it's gonna be F Sport Performance or F Sport, we can lay that to bed or lay that to, to the grave. I don't know what the right term is. It, it's F Sport Performance for the Japanese market to have that kind of global continuation of the correct naming for this vehicle. So there'll, there'll be a 500 unit lottery for the F-Sport Performance First Edition. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's similar to like our launch edition uh, with the incognito paint color, which by the way, I don't think we've seen that on any Lexus since the IS500 uh, F-Sport Performance Launch Edition. It's, it's a very long name, yes, but the incognito paint color might be returning. I don't think we have specifics here for the Japanese launch edition though. But it's good to be back in the studio so I can update you guys on industry news from the Japanese and the Koreans. I'm also gonna be doing um, shorts. Starting off, what are, what are shorts, first of all, because it sounds like I'm, you know, I am wearing shorts, by the way, I'm not, you know. Anyways, shorts are like 15 to 60 second short clips kind of to promote the channel, also to draw new view viewers into the channel. So it's not really like a, a huge money-making machine for me in theory, but it's there to like be an advertisement for the channel. So definitely stay tuned for shorts. I'll have some fun with it. 60 seconds to 15 second little clips for you guys to just morsel on in addition to my updates on news as well as, you know, the car reveals and all that good stuff. Anyways, I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you in the next video. If you enjoyed today's coverage, at least hit the like button for my daughter's drawings. If you had half of a soul, you would at least do that for them. I'm going to end it there. Subscribe for more. If you're not, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.